Hello True Believer, welcome back. So we're going to do Scratch Activity 5, Shoot a Game. Okay, so follow this tutorial here, and hopefully we'll make a little simple shooter game. Okay, so the first thing is we need to get rid of uh, Scratch, that version of him. And we need to find a player, a bullet, and an enemy. So this is the cat that I want, so when he flies around. And you can choose any of these that you want. Okay, these are the ones that I just found that work the best. Uh, for this tutorial. We then have a star and then the enemy I'm going to make is a crab. Okay, so there's our star which is going to be our bullet, there's our crab which is going to be our enemy, and then there's our player. Probably need to shrink down the crab because we're going to have a whole heap of these up on the screen and we also probably want to shrink down the bullet. Okay, so we now have our different things. Uh, we need to change this to scratch, this one to bullet, and we can leave that as crab. Excellent. So now we've got to set the rotation and the movement of scratch. So same as what we've done before with the uh, maze in the Pac-Man example. We're going to start when clicking, and we're going to have instead a little something a little different is we're going to have... Um, the direction of the player. Okay, so we're going to set the direction of the player up to 90. And we're going to set the rotation style as left to right. And then we're going to have that in a forever loop. And what we're going to have is if the right arrow is pressed, so let's find that there. There's the right arrow. We're going to have a way of setting the direction of the player so that we know which way to fire the bullet. Okay, so we're going to set the direction of the player here to 90. Then we're going to have point direction in 90. Then change X by 10. Okay, now rather than rewriting that all again to the left, just duplicate that and we'll change that to left arrow that to negative 90 that to negative 90 and then that to negative 90 oh sorry 10 we don't want to go 90 that'll be too fast when we go left um we can then also duplicate this again for the up and down arrows but we don't need any of the middle bit so when we go up, we just want to change the Y. And then we use the duplicate tool again. When we press the down arrow, we use negative 10. So that should make Scratch move around, left to right, and he looks like a little cool little superhero moving around the place. Excellent, so we'll stop that. Right, the next bit then we need to build the bullet. Now, the bullet, we'll be able to create something where we clone it. So we, we don't have to have just one of the bullets. Okay, so we don't have to put a whole heap of bullets down here. We just have the one bullet and we clone itself and have a whole heap of conditions that go with it, which is kind of cool feature of Scratch. So when that starts, we go over here to looks, we hide the bullet straight away. We then go control forever. And then we go if, Spacebar is pressed down. We'll wait. And then here comes the cool part. We create a clone of myself. Okay, so what's going to happen every time you begin this? If spacebar is pressed, that bullet will hide itself, but then create a clone of itself. So it's still going to exist, but you won't be able to see it. Okay, so then when I start as a clone, so once the clone begins, we want to make sure that the clone doesn't start on the front layer. Okay, so we're going to have to go back layers. So that just stops um, the bullets starting in front of the flying cat or the crab because they're going to be behind everything so that they, they look more effectively. We then want to go to where the flying cat starts. So we want to go to where the flying cat is currently. Where Scratch is. 
and we want to show him. So the bullet now exists. Now this is why we used the variable before. We want to point in the direction that the player is pointing. So that's why we stored that um, back here in Scratch. So now we're pointing in the same direction as both the, um, the way that the Scratch is pointing. Okay. And then we basically want to have some movement of this bullet. So we want to repeat until a certain condition is met. Okay, so this is going to be a conditional loop. And we're going to repeat until um, touching edge. Which is, where's the touching? There we go. The edge, so until it touches the edge of the screen. And we just move 10 steps in whatever direction that we're pointed. So it doesn't matter if it's left or right, it will just keep moving 10 steps. So this is why we don't use the change Y with this particular function. Okay, then there's a bit of safety. Um, if the thing now touches the edge. So if the bullet's now touching the edge, we now delete this clone. Okay, so now if we start that game, the bullets disappear, and as we move scratch up and down, if I press spacebar, there's my bullet. And I can have multiple bullets. Excellent, beginner of this little cool little shooting game. Okay, so now we've got to work out how the enemies work. So on the crab, we're going to start when, uh, we'll start when green flag is clicked. And we want the crab to hide because again, this is going to be a cloning sort of process. We then go over here to forever. We wait. And this is up to you, but I've chosen four seconds so I don't have too many crabs taking up my screen. Um, you can make that slow if you want. And then we go create clone of myself. When I start as a clone, we go to motion. We point in a direction. And we go... For a pick a random number again. So we're going to pick in a random number and we're going to go one from three to 60. Okay, we then also want the crabs not to always spawn in the same spot. So we can have um, a go to um, point. So there, and we're going to have random number again. So we're going to pick a random number from one, sorry, negative 240, which is the width of this. To the um, 240 this way and then it should be down to 180 up to 180 so 180 down to negative 180 so if we go negative 240 in the x tab 240 and then we go over here to the y and we go negative 180 tab 180 so if you press tab that allows you to go between the boxes if you press shift tab it actually goes backwards press tab it goes the other way so that's another little helpful trick we then go over here to looks and we show and then we go up to control we've got a forever loop so this is the motion of the crab so the motion is just going to move in 10 steps and then if it goes the edge and I can't even express how awesome that is that took me um, when I first learned my first programming language, probably four days to learn how to do the bouncing edge. And you've just got that in a click. Okay. Um, then we do control. If statement. And then touching star. Or the bullet, sorry. And then we want to broadcast that a hit has occurred. So we go broadcast, new message, hit. And then we want to also make sure that we don't have too many of these clones going around. So we delete the clone once it's hit. Um, so then the next part 
we've also got to have back here is um, when clones um, get hit, we want to make sure that they delete. So when I receive hit, we also want to delete the clone of the bullet. Okay, so that was step number four. Sorry, I need to go back and make sure you add that in. Um, and then with the crabs, That should work. Fantastic. So that should be the full version of it. Um, let's see what happens now. So if we load this up, move scratch around. There's a crab. Bouncing around, there's another crab. So let's see what happens if I try and shoot at them. Gone. Gone. There we go, taking the crabs out. So what you can do now is you can build some more features into this so you can have a scoring system. You may also want to get rid of um, the player direction and making it visible. So click here on the checklist I'm doing that. And there you go. So have a play. Here's some extension ideas that you might want to do with the game. So you might want to add some sound effects, make the player point to the mouse and fire instead, add health to the monsters. So sometimes you might need to hit it at multiple times. Add lives to the player so he can only be hit so many times by the crabs. Make a scoring system, add a background, add obstructions so players and enemies like the maze couldn't get through. And then make some more, um, some enemies that uh, can walk through obstructions. So make them like gods. Okay, so happy programming and good luck.